In part one, we had a look at riding from the Perth CBD out to Guildford. In this one, we're going to ride even further. We're going to go all the way out to Midland, where the path ends. Well, it ends as far as I could see. We're not going to show you the entire path. Uh, if you want to see that, you can look at part one. What we're going to look at is some of the quirks along the way, some of the design quirks, some of the uh, interesting diversions that have been set up, and the lack of signage. The first quirk isn't even on the path going out to Midland. It's in smack in the middle of the city. And I had no idea this path was here until I saw some cyclists pop out of it because it's completely unsignposted. It's not coloured red or anything like that. It is a shared path because it's got the symbols there for both pedestrians and cyclists. And it takes you... It's, it's a little bit narrow and then it gets to here. It's like, what are those things on the, on the path there for? They're a bit hopeless and then... Yeah, you can see how it's not very wide getting around that lady just standing there. Am I supposed to be on the path here? Should I really be out on the road? And sorry about going into the sunlight. But uh, And then again, we get to this point here and should I be turning up here? Where does this take me? There's absolutely no signage anywhere. And when I get to the end, uh, where do I go? I mean, there's a left turn arrow, but there's nothing for cyclists. And I know there's a cycle path off to the right here. And this is the way we're going to get to Midland. So off we go. Uh, but let's have a look at it from the rear view, uh, hopefully a little bit clearer. You can see the symbology on the road there, and they've got these concrete things along the sides of the path. I hope you don't clip one of those with your pedal and come over. It's a little bit silly, I guess, narrowing the path like that. Uh, and then they've got these stair or steps, what do you call them? Not steps, chairs just bolted into the path. Again, an obstruction. She's just there on a phone, ignoring me, ringing my bell. Uh, yeah, not exactly um, the best little secret path, although it does seem to be fairly well used. It's one of those things I just think, uh, you know, who designed that and, and why? But anyway, I then uh, used it for a third time coming back on another day. So let's just see what it looks like coming from the other direction. And you can see here we're coming along the, the principal shared path and there's absolutely zero signage anywhere to say if you go right here there's a path that will take you um, through this little bit of the CBD to another path. Nothing. There's nothing on the, on the path really. There's no directional signage. You just have to know it's here. And, and of course the only way I found out it was here was by following some other cyclists that were using it. This time we're going to avoid uh, going up on that very narrow path. Uh, we'll just stay out here. And there's a ramp here on the left and I completely missed it. Oops, <laughs> rookie error. You know, go back, do a U-turn, dodge the furniture. Yeah, it's all bolted down. You don't want to run into that. You will crash uh, down the path here, avoiding these concrete block houses on the side um, and people looking at their phones, etc. And we've made it through, woohoo. Not a bad little path, but flippin' heck, they could make it a little bit uh, easier to find and a little bit safer to use. Well, I'm not going to show you the whole trip because it's about 18 kilometres and it would get pretty boring. We're just going to look at the highlights like this level crossing. And this first one was pretty straightforward. Just slow down a little bit, look both ways. The cars are sitting at the lights. Yep, not too bad. Let's review it. Well, I've ridden seven kilometres from the western edge of the CBD and I'm at my first road crossing. There's a, a railway crossing over there, out of the sun of my eyes, and there's a set of traffic lights here, and a pretty simple crossing behind me. So that's a distance slightly greater than the Bay Run. Uh, I'm not sure about the, the east-west cycleway, but that's not too bad. That's uh, one road crossing in that distance. We'll see how many, well, see how far it is to the next one. Now I promise I'm trying not to bore you with uh, miles and miles of track. I just wanted to show you that it's just so consistently nice for kilometre after kilometre. It's red, it's wide, it's got a lane thing down the middle of it. Uh, it's just all really nicely set up. It's smooth, there's underpasses, and it's just like this for, I don't know, 18 kilometres or so. Very, very nice indeed. It's, it's just such a nice change to get on something like this. And uh, because it follows the line of the railway, it's pretty good. Now, we're coming up to Bayswater Station where there's a major diversion. And I'm going to go through this uh, from a couple of different angles just to show you what it's like from different directions because not the greatest with the sun in our eyes coming from this direction. It kind of washes everything out. You can't see too much. But the kind of general features you can see is they've given us a really nice wide uh, 
lane here in both directions for cycling. They've just taken one or two lanes of traffic out and that's that. Um, now coming up to this set of lights, I, uh, I'd come through here once from the other direction uh, yesterday and I wasn't really sure was I supposed to go left or was I supposed to go right because there's just zero signage anywhere telling you what to do. And with the sun in my eyes, I couldn't actually see that there's a bike lane over on the right hand side. We'll come back to that, but let's have a look at this from the other direction. Um, because they've got the bridge closed and this is a temporary diversion, you can see it's fairly steep. She was on an e-bike and still having to work fairly hard to get up the road. Uh, but you can see all the you know great separation that they've put in here. That, that separated bit where they've got the red and white poles is wider than some Sydney bike lanes. You know, and that's the separator between us and the traffic. And it just gets wider and wider and wider. Uh, you know, they've just spared no effort to take up uh, road space to provide a, a good diversion. Now have a look at this, the way it swings around to get you nicely onto the bike path. And they've laid a, a temporary concrete path there, I guess, to get you across there. I mean, in Sydney, they just would have put down what gravel or, or that, um, uh, or um, what's that plasticky stuff we've been seeing on the grass. Uh, you know, just have a look at this again. I wanted to show this in slow motion because it's so nice the way they bend you out and then bend you back in again. So you have a really nice transition onto the path. Again, in Sydney, they probably just would have put in a, 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 a T-junction or something, and you'd almost have to come to a complete stop to get your way uh, through this diversion. But this is this is just a thing of beauty, and uh, and I think it should be celebrated. So whilst I think, yeah, some things are possibly not the best, uh, then they come up with other things like this, and you think, whoever designed that deserves a medal. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's really top notch. Uh, now, looking at this coming out from the other direction, yeah, I figured out I was supposed to go right here and, uh, you know, rejoin the uh, the diversion on the uh, up here. And again, they've, they've put us on the road and in the uphill section, they've given us a nice wide bike lane again, which is just excellent. They've got the separators there. And um, yeah, I, I really, apart from the lack of signage, I guess, uh, this was, you know, a, a really nice uh, piece of work. So it, it kind of begs the question, if they can do it over here, uh, why is it so difficult for uh, this to be done this well in other jurisdictions? Well, we made it to our next road crossing. It's uh, two kilometres up the road. And the reason there's a crossing is because they're redeveloping this train station here and they've had to put in a detour. So normally I think the, the bike path would go over the bridge but that's closed at the moment. Interesting things about the detour, uh, really badly marked. I had no idea I was supposed to turn right when I got across the road. Uh, the other thing is that they've put in an uphill bike lane, which is good on the way downhill, you, you just get on the road. And uh, they've also uh, bolted in these red and white poles into the road, which is uh, for separators, which is very good. In fact, I'd say that uh, that temporary bike lane there for construction is better than some of the permanent bike lanes in Sydney, uh, which I guess says a lot. Um, only real issue was a lot of broken glass on the path, uh, not just here but in other places, you know, drunk smashing bottles and stuff like that, just not being swept up, but uh, you know, what can you do about that really? Well, let's see where the next crossing is. Well, even temporary bike lanes don't last forever and they've put us on the road. And I ducked down here just to have a look at what the bike path looked like normally. Yep, nice good bike path. And 30 kilometres now, take note of that. That's this whole section of road, which goes for miles was 30 kilometres now. Now, because we're going into the sun, I decided to cut that bit out because you couldn't really see it. Let's see it from the other direction. So you can see it's pretty obvious we're coming in towards some kind of construction zone from this point. There's cones, the signs, there's all sorts of stuff. Let's see how easy it is to find our way back onto that section of road. And we get to here and look, there's a pedestrian sign pointing to the left and nothing for cyclists. And because I don't know the area, I was thought, I, well, I don't know where I was. And I got down here and I went, this is not the way I came. <laughs> That's all wrong. Let's go back and have another look at what was up the other end. Because of course, I was riding with my son and uh, with the sun in my eyes, couldn't really see what was ahead of me. Uh, so it's back into a 30k zone. We come around the corner, lots of parked cars and oh look, there's some signs. 
pedestrian signs only nothing for cyclists even though there's a shared path there with lots of cyclists on it but what you will notice as we come along here not a lot of cars speed humps quite often i think they really were quite keen uh, to keep the speed down to 30 kilometers an hour and you can see that this uh, on-road diversion goes for quite some time uh, with speed hump after speed hump uh, so yeah good effort on uh, on trying to keep the vehicle speeds down and i guess just keep vehicles out of here completely unless it's local traffic so we come into the construction area and let's see what happens here so notice all the road surface is red uh, you know it's typical where they want things to be slow i swung out here not realizing see that thing on the left there that little lane uh, and that driver in the van had actually left a gap because i was supposed to go across here and come in from the left there oops well you know no harm no foul i guess uh, and again you can see the beautiful red separators as we come down here slow down signs telling you to well, obviously slow down uh, give way to any pedestrians crossing the path here and we've made it back to this set of traffic lights so that's all good uh, now let's yeah, you know, we go on another couple of kilometers and we come to our next uh, crossing and I stopped here because there was left turning traffic and this is one of those places you've got to look back over your right hand shoulder to make sure there's nothing coming. Let's review it again. We're now just under 11 kilometers out and uh, there's a third road crossing. This one's an interesting one because there's a, uh, what is it, left, left turn? Yeah, there's a left turn across uh, where you need to cross. And there's no bicycle signals or uh, pedestrian signals or whatever. You just have to look over your shoulder, see if there's anyone about to turn the corner and go across if, uh, if it's okay. Pretty interesting kind of crossing, but you know, it works. I guess as long as no one parks their truck across where you want to get across. Uh, now, I'm 11 k's out of the CBD and I've got no clue where I am because as usual, uh, if there's signage I can't see it, I haven't seen a single sign so far telling me where I am or where I'm going or what the distance is to the next thing, but bloody, it's a great path, it really is, I'm, I'm doing 30 kilometers an hour or so on bits of it, it's, uh, it's beautifully laid, it's nice and wide, it's reasonably well used, uh, you know the crossing purely aren't a problem, be nice if there's some water points on it. God, there was one thing I was thinking of. Oh yeah, so back there in that section where there's uh, roadworks, um, or where they ripped up the bike path and put cyclists onto the road, it's all 30 kilometers an hour. Now, whether drivers are actually sticking to 30 k's is another matter, but uh, yeah, where they put cyclists on the road, 30 kilometer hour speed limit. Again, absolutely no signage or symbology on the road or on the sides of the roads to say, hey, cyclists go this way to get to the next bit of bike path, but Oh, you know, I managed to get through it in one go without any problems. You know, it's, it's well, I guess for people who are even worse wayfinding uh, uh, skills than me, that would be quite a thing. But I, I have noticed actually, there's, this is where we rode yesterday. It's a parallel road over there on the other side of the railway line. There are cyclists coming down there, so um, yeah, choice of routes. All good, let's go find the next one. Well, you might be noticing a common theme here, and that's the lack of signage and wayfinding. And we're about to strike that problem yet again. We're coming into Midland. Uh, as usual, the path is great. I think we're now at least 15, 16, maybe even 18 kilometers from the CBD. And it's been a pretty good run until we get up to, um, well, not this one, actually. This was quite a good little crossing. We just had to wait for the train for a bit and uh, there are quite a few of these kind of gates um, along the railway lines obviously you know to uh, to keep you safe so you know they seem to function fairly well uh, but here we are at the end of the line and uh, it was a very weird kind of setup as usual you know it just says road ahead slow down and i'm looking around for signage to say well where am i supposed to go am i supposed to go off to the right there or am i supposed to go left and, and uh, no idea absolutely no idea you can see i stopped hesitated tried to figure it out and I thought okay this kind of looks like there's a path over here again but do I go left or do I go right I didn't know uh, where the path goes from here so I thought well I'll go across here and I stopped looked both ways and then figured out okay there's a cut through across um, the island over there so I'll go and use that and uh, and see where that takes me and I could see some red path on the other side yeah very confusing arrangement first time well, that's an interesting little arrangement they've uh, created for that 
that crossing. I had no clue how to use it coming through first time, uh, but I figured my way out. As usual, signage symbology just uh, completely missing. Uh, you kind of got to get out almost in the middle of it before you figure out where you're supposed to go, which is uh, really not safe when you've got a really busy road crossing like this. Uh, yeah, again, well, I'm a, I'll be fine the next time I use it, but as a first timer, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty confusing. Now, I really want to wrap this thing up so I can go for a ride, um, but uh, yeah, it's just a few more minutes to go, so uh, please stick with it. We are now actually coming up to the end of the track. Yes, this really is genuinely the end. Um, and I know that because on the ground there was a, um, a, a well, first bit of signage, I guess, that was kind of useful, and it said the end. Uh, so, yeah, I knew I'd come to the end of the line. But where was I supposed to go after that? You just kind of dropped here in suburbia uh, with no clue where to go. So went over here, had a look, thought, no, that doesn't really work for me. Let's go back across the railway line. And I was just looking around to see if I could find a path or some signage or anything which would take me on a little bit further. And I came around here and um, yeah, just on a whim decided to go up here and have a look. And yeah, found another, there was a, a bike lane and I followed it for a while and after a while gave up and turned around and came back. Now I was asked about priority at crossings and the answer is I haven't seen any so far. Uh, but there's a lot of these kind of what are called common sense crossings where uh, there's, there's no lights or anything like that. You just have to use common sense getting across them. Now we're coming up to uh, where there's a turn off to the left. Uh, this is Mount Lawley, I think. And I just want to show you there's absolutely no signage along here whatsoever saying there's a turn off or where this will take you. It's just like, surprise, there's a turn off. If you're a local, I guess you know where to go. Anyone else, well, just too bad. This is approaching it from the other direction. I, I ducked down there to have, uh, I knew there was a cafe down there. Um, and again, this is showing you there's just no indication that uh, when we go across this road and, and kind of duck over the railway line, that there's a cycle path on the other side. I mean, look, the infrastructure is well set up. You know, there's good crossings across here. There's nice wide cutouts. You can see all the kind of lumpy stuff they put on the ground. The, the you know, the concrete's really nice. The, you know, it's all red, etc. But we come across here, no signage, no symbology, no nothing. Uh, at least I know I just have to duck down this ramp now because, you know, my mate showed me how to do this. And when we get down to the bottom, there's no signage again to say, um, which way to go. Now I guess if you're a local you know obviously going to the left of the city etc. But uh, yeah it's just, it's just something I'll harp on again again and again and again. Um, infrastructure is really good and the wayfinding is really bad.